So my name is Jordi Nijnhuis. Um, I'm based in the Netherlands and I work for RTC Media Training Center. Uh, at this training center, um, we train media professionals, journalists, but also campaigners um, to create campaigns for behavioral change and with societal impact. Um, within the scope of the Game Changer project, we have developed uh, uh, training curriculum and you can find this uh, curriculum on the website so that's gamechangereu.org if i'm not mistaken and the entire package you can download the entire package from this website and it includes uh, a trainer's manual uh, training handbook all the slide decks including speaker notes uh, a big campaign canvas um, and some exercises for um, young people to build campaigns themselves um, during this session, I took some parts from this curriculum to highlight our way of thinking um, and also to, to give you a better understanding on how we look at social media campaigning um, with societal impact. So pretty much this entire curriculum is aimed to make campaigns as easy as possible, to implement those campaigns and also have campaigns with impact. So we're not aiming for a nice number of views and likes, but we're looking for something that's a bit more substantial than that. But first, I would like to ask you to go to menti.com and use this code. Um, I'm very interested to see who joined this session and what your experience is with campaigning. Um, I will share my menti screen. So I stop this one. So feel free to um, pick up your mobile phone or use a different tab in your um, web browser and go to menti.com and use the code 4704975. Thank you, Noemi. <laughs> and please keep that window open after you've answered these questions because there's another question after this one. So go to the menti.com and use the code 47. 04975. I'm going to give you 30 seconds to reply to these questions. Okay, thank you very much. So I, I would say this is an average group of people. We've got some people who really know how to design a campaign and implement a campaign. Uh, we've got some people who are in the middle, but also a couple of people who strongly disagree with these statements. Clear, thank you very much. Um, let me go to the next question. Um, and feel free to treat this question as an open question. So what topics are you campaigning on if you're campaigning? Um, but also if you're not campaigning, what topics would you like to campaign on? Um, just to see um, what topics are important for you. Racial injustice, polarization. So you can reply to this question on the same page as before. Hate and polarization, youth unemployment, cyber harassment. Evo logo. I don't, I personally, I don't know that word. Can someone explain that maybe to the rest of the group? And feel free to use the chat if you're not willing to use your webcam. Okay, I'm going to give you 30 seconds and then we'll start with the session. Uh, 
Um, and I wrote these all down because they will come back at a later stage. Okay, thank you very much. And I think these are, are nice topics to have a, a discussion about. Um, and the good news is that the, the curriculum I mentioned is, I have to say, pretty agnostic. So um, we're not forcing people to um, take a specific direction. Um, the entire methodology can be used for a variety of topics, including uh, the ones you've mentioned. Uh, and this is the canvas I mentioned. So um, within the scope of this project, um, we've developed a canvas and we, we've we run through the, the course, through the training with young campaign teams. Um, and we had them to fill in this canvas. It's a two day training. Um, the green squares are the ones they develop on day one and the blue squares are the ones they've developed on day two. Um, and we've implemented uh, these campaigns in France, Greece, Poland, but we're also using this methodology um, in the Kurdistan region of Iraq. Um, and the ambition and the aim is to create something that's, that's easy to understand for young people, um, while still guiding them to the right direction to have societal impact with their campaigns. And a campaign in this sense can be defined as something that's 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 a, a collection of stories. So a story is something that's simple. It teaches us something and it guides us to another path maybe. Um, the way we look at campaigns is that it's a system of stories or a collection of stories. And all these stories communicate the same message in a different way. And the aim of this collection of stories is to persuade people to change their behavior. And again, you can apply this to pretty much anything. If you want people to stop um, bullying, um, you can use a campaign. If you want people to um, adapt um, more uh, um, environmental uh, measures, you can use a campaign. If you want um, to, to create more opportunities for youth employment, you can create a campaign. Uh, our mantra for campaigning is as follows. Know them need them, involve them. Personally, I would say this is key for campaigning. And the them in this sentence is of course your audience, your target audience. Try to understand your target audience. Make sure you need your target audience and involve them in your campaign. The more you can involve your target audience, the more you can include your target audience, the stronger your campaign will be and the more impact you will have. And quite often we see that campaigns are just broadcasting messages. So um, stop bullying, um, say no to racism, et cetera, et cetera. Um, of course, there's a place and time for these campaigns, but they can be perceived as something that's preachy and probably you'll miss your target audience if you want to aim for behavioral change. When we, when we build campaigns, it's important to have something that's strong. It's easy to understand, but it also has a positive action. So instead of saying no, you should offer an alternative. You should offer something that people can do. And to um, avoid creating blurry or um, um, difficult to understand campaigns, it's important to have a strong key campaign message. This com key campaign message quite often states the problem. So it gives people an understanding and a reason why you're there, but it also proposes a solution. So um, we are here to fix this for you. And in the end, it invites a specific action for your target audience so they can be involved in being the change you want to see. For example, um, sharing this information is dangerous. It's easy to understand, but it states the problem. And you can create a lot of content surrounding this. So what's the impact of this information? Um, um, why are people sharing this information? How is this information being shared? That's a nice start. But then you should also propose a solution. You want to make an impact. You want to see change in the world. Um, so the solution in this case could be, you can easily verify information. And again, there's a whole bunch of content you can create around this. Um, use these fact-checking tools. 
Um, listen to this person who understands information. Um, these are credible sources. Uh, why don't you go follow them? And again, that contributes to the change you want to see. Um, and it should be believable and invite a specific action. That's of course linked to the solution you're providing, um, but make sure that people understand how they can be part of that solution. So stop the information epidemic from spreading. Flag this information on social media websites so that it can be removed. Um, make sure you fact check your own uh, information. Make sure that people around you understand what media literacy is, et cetera, et cetera. And if we look at campaigns like this, um, we force ourselves to look for a real world impact. Instead of just crafting a nice message and broadcasting it to your audience, we are thinking about how can my audience contribute to the change I want to see. There are many ways to change societies. Um, our, so to say, opponents, so the, the more extreme groups, um, they tend to use violence and terrorism. They see violence and terrorism as a way to change a society, to move a society to a different perspective, to different behavior. Um, luckily, there are also non-violent strategies and campaigns are part of non-violent strategies. Violent strategies are all aimed towards destroying or injuring property and persons. So terrorism, in a sense, is a way to, um, to create societal change. Um, riots as well, revolutions, um, guerrilla warfare, the more extreme sides of, of societal change quite often come with violence and terrorism. If we look at the protests um, in the past, months and maybe in the, the United States specifically, um, these are closely linked to uh, violent strategies. Within this project, we are using the same thinking. So we want to create societal change, but we're looking towards non-violent strategies. So how can we achieve the same goal or a goal we found important um, without using violence or scare tactics? Um, in a broader societal sense, you can look into strikes, marches, demonstrations, uh, boycotts. Um, but with campaigning, um, we are more leaning towards the direction of uh, civil uh, advocacy. And if we want to create a movement or if we want to go for societal change, there are many things we can do. Um, this is just to give you uh, an idea of the, 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 the ingredients or the elements you can use in a campaign. Um, and these are only the offline uh, parts of a campaign. So you can look at the lectures and you can have panel discussions. Um, you can um, um, do uh, workshops, street parades, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and again, if you want to uh, take a look at all the details of these uh, slides, just download the curriculum for the from the website. Um, looking at online activism, there are different ways we go at it. Um, not to say that the online world and the offline world is separated or that it's uh, diverse. Um, strong campaigns do have both online and offline elements integrated. Uh, powerful campaigns often use online elements, online ingredients to move people to offline events, to offline action. Um, so don't look at this as being separate um, things. Uh, these go hand in hand. And again, there, there are many ways to, um, to become a digital activist. So it can go from hashtag sharing to work, uh, online workshops, um, online protests, but also swarming. So that's, that's um, creating pretty much an online strike or an online demonstration in specific places. So you mobilize people and you go to a specific platform or a specific forum, and you just put your messages out there, um, et cetera, et cetera. So again, many things you can do. And the reason why I include this in this session is that um, quite often we go for, for a pretty narrow perspective on campaigning. So we look for video productions, maybe some memes, um, we create a nice hashtag and we think that's that. But that's not the case. There, there's, a, there's a wide spectrum of possibilities for campaigning. Um, and feel free to utilize 
them all or feel free to to experiment with them and have fun with them um real impact comes from people who are participating in your campaign who take your campaign to the next level of course nice visuals nice memes nice videos um go hand in hand with that because that, that gives your campaign a brand a touch of feel people recognize you but in the end you want people to do something um, and these are all tools to get people to become active and to move them to a more productive part of your campaign. From a campaign design perspective, it's important to have clear goals for your campaign. And a way to get there is by using smart goals. And smart goals, they might sound a bit boring. They may look a bit uh, boring but it will help you to to create a strategic campaign that's clear and that's um, easy to evaluate um, the way you can formulate smart goals is by using um, all these parts of the word smart so your goal should be specific you should be clear about what you want to achieve um, it should be measurable so how can we measure whether we made this change or not whether we reach this goal or not. It should be attainable, of course. So that goes hand in hand with your resources, with your time, um, with your campaign team, et cetera, et cetera. Um, of course, it should be relevant because um, you can do whatever you want, but does it really help your mission or your goal? And they should be time bound because then you know, and you can um, put placers or markers in time to check whether you're on the right track. So if you set up a campaign or if you design a campaign, um, try to design them with smart goals. So I want to achieve this by then, and then you can check whether you made an impact or not. So this is an example of a smart goal. So for example, I want to use, uh, create a campaign to persuade young boys um, to stop smoking um, a smart goal could be that i want to create a video with a creative agency um, featuring young girls who show that smoking is dirty this video will be shared on youtube and it will show a phone number that people can call to um, who want to combat their addiction i want this video to have 2000 views and at least 20 phone calls within six months this is a smart goal. All the ingredients are there. It's specific, it's measurable, it's attainable, it's relevant, and it's time bound. In other words, a goal or a smart goal is just a dream of a campaign with a deadline. We all want to see societal change. We all want to change the game. Um, but sometimes you have to put deadlines on those dreams. We have to make it smaller. We have to make it attainable. We have to make it clear for ourselves. We have to create something that we're aiming for. So try to create dreams with a deadline. And again, to illustrate how the, the previous example is smart, it's super specific because we defined 2000 views and 20 phone calls. It's measurable because we can measure that easily. Um, it's attainable when we look from a campaign perspective. It's not too crazy high numbers. Um, it's super relevant because we will be aiming this video at these young boys and the phone calls will actually help them to combat their addiction. And it's time bound because we want to measure it within six months. Um, again, just to illustrate, if my goal is to have young people um, stop smoking or combat their addiction, I would say that phone line or the phone number is a very nice idea because you can actually help them and you can track that impact you want to see. You can measure the amount of kids who call in um, and you can measure whether they stopped or not with smoking. Um, to get that message out there, to get that phone number out there, there are many ways you can go at it. In the previous example, we've used the video, and probably that makes sense. Uh, but you can also look into posters, billboards, blogs, um, audio, podcasts, 
face-to-face -face meeting, graffiti, whatever you can think of. Um, and quite often when we look at campaigns, we start with the media. We start with the idea of a video. But I would try to start with the other part, with the impact you want to see. So the impact I want to see is that young boys stop smoking. And the phone number is probably the way to get there. And then after you've set that goal, you can think about mediums. You can think about audio, video, print, et cetera, et cetera. So instead of starting with the idea of video, I would start with the impact. Also very important is to have a clear call to action. Um, and when campaigning, I would like to suggest that you put a call to action in every piece of content you create. Um, and these can vary from a simple like, share and subscribe, you know, all the things all the hip Instagram vloggers do and every YouTube video has. Um, but it can also be a bit more elaborate. So you can uh, create buttons where you ask people to learn more. So go to this website. Um, you can ask people to volunteer. That's a clear call to action. Um, you can donate, buy stuff, join our page, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, the BBC was one of the first organizations that started with a simple like, share, and subscribe message after their uh, social media post, and um, engagement increased with over twenty percent. So you really have to call on people to do something with the content they saw or engage with, um, and you have to steer them in the right uh, direction. So a simple call to action like sh like, share, and subscribe that can help you boost your campaign, reach uh, broader audiences and a bigger audience. Um, thinking about impact, it's also nice to um, have a bit more elaborate calls to actions in a campaign. And you can use them all. You can vary throughout your campaign, um, but it's nice to, to have some moments in a campaign where you can really track whether the people you've reached are actually doing something with the message you've sent them. So if you want people to, to find out more, you want to have them to go to a website, um, you can then track how long people or how much time people spend on your website. Um, and these are very nice measures to have. These are great impact evaluations um, from a social media perspective. So instead of just measuring views um, and um, um, the, the amount of people you've reached, um, a bit more extensive could be that you measure the comments, the likes and shares you get. So instead of measuring awareness you can measure engagement and engagement is something when when people actually do something with your with your content so they either like they share your content or they comment um, and it shows you a bit more than just the amount of people you've reached because um you can see whether they like your comments uh your content through uh looking at the comments um you can measure likes because likes are just likes um, and when people share your content, that's pretty powerful because it means that, that people saw your message, um, they analyzed your message and then figured, hey, my friends also would also be interested in this content. So shares are also nice to, to um, analyze and measure. Um, running a campaign, I would also uh, suggest to you to um, take a look at what kind of audience is engaging with your content? So who is commenting? Uh, who is sharing my posts? Um, try to understand them a bit better. Maybe take a look at their timeline, see what other content they share. You can easily learn from that. Um, and these are just your, your more generic um, social media uh, measures. And pretty much all the platforms will give you these numbers. Um, and they reveal something. So for uh, views and reach, um, it reveals your demographic and it reveals your audience. Um, when we look at comments, likes and shares, it will show you a bit more about the impact you have with your content, whether people are actually responding to your content or not. 
Um, the numbers the social media platforms will give you are not created equally, I would say. Hi, Aaron. I have a question. I apologize if I'm interrupting, but this- No, go ahead. Okay. Go ahead, by all means. So you're talking about uh, scoring uh, or you're talking about engagement, but a, a question that I, I often have or think to myself is, do you score positive and negative comments, for example, when you're evaluating a campaign? So like a like versus now Facebook has different faces. Like, do you try to interpret what those engagements are and and how how you measure that? Or is it engagement and a like is more or less any type of um, uh, interact, um, what's the correct term? term? Uh, engagement, I suppose. Yeah. Um I do, I do both actually. So personally, I really like to look at engagement rates. So that's um, where you take the amount of people you've reached and you divide it by uh, the amount of engagement you had and you get a percentage out of it. Um, the industry standard is around 6%. So if you've got an engagement rate of 6%, um, that means that 6% of the people who saw your content actually engaged or did something with it. Um, that's a pretty strong, uh, measure if you want to look at the quality of your content um, by looking into likes versus angry faces or hateful comments um, it, it shows you a bit more about how people um, perceived your content so it, it will tell you a bit more about the audiences you've reached if people are pretty upset with your content um, well it depends on the goal of your campaign of course but if you're trying to reach um, angry people with a positive message, then I would say angry faces could be an indicator of success. Okay. When, awesome. Whether they like your content or not. So, so it, 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 it depends on the goal you set for yourself. Sure. Okay. Um, awesome. Thank and, you. And again, smart goals are the way to create clear goals. Um, so so it's, 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 you really have to dive into those uh, numbers. Um, you can analyze this data on so many ways. Um, and I would suggest that you do it on as many ways as possible. So you can also do um, co uh, comment analysis. How are people responding? What words are they using? Can I learn from those words and use them in my own content um, for the next piece of, uh, for the next video I'm creating or the next meme I'm creating? Awesome, thank you. You're welcome. Um, and I think that tells you that, that numbers are not created equally. Um, try, to, try to go into your social media platforms, try to understand the numbers. What do they mean? Um, and what can I learn from that? Um, the amount of reach for, in this example is pretty nice, but the engagement um, is probably a bit more telling. So in this example, the engagement rate would be way over 10%. And that would mean that they've created powerful content that people are actively responding to. Um, so really try, take your time to learn from the metrics and try to understand them. What do they mean for my campaign? And to help you a bit, um, we've created this analogy about engagement. Generally speaking, there are three types of engagement. So um, the first type would be flirting engagement it's engagement that provokes a quick reaction like a quick flirt in a bar or restaurant so you see something you like it you wink at it but that's about it um, and if we translate this to to content um, quite often you see this kind of engagement with memes gifs short videos um, images um, and you can measure those those quick flirts through likes, reactions, maybe shares, maybe comments if it's not too extensive, and definitely views. If we want to have a bit more interaction with our audience, and if we want to go a step further than just flirting with an audience, we can look into dating engagement. And this type of engagement means that, that your audience had to take time to do something with your content. 
And it provides you a bit more time to sell your message, to sell your story, to share your campaign ideas. Um, the more time your audience spends with your content, the more time you'll have to convey your message, of course. Um, and when we think about dating engagement, it can be an online game or asking your audience members to tag people um, or share a hashtag. Uh, it can also be a long video. So if people watch a video that's part of your campaign and they watch it for over 30 seconds, I would say that's dating engagement. The, the, the average time people watch videos on uh, Facebook is between three seconds and 15 seconds. So if someone watched the video on your campaign for over 30 seconds, that's, pretty, that's, that's a pretty effective video probably. Um, and you had a long time to sell your story to share your message with your audience. So in that sense, it can be perceived as dating engagement. But the best, of course, would be committing engagement. An audience member you've reached and they stay, and it's the his, um, and they stay with you um, for a long time. And maybe they're also investing in the relationship with your campaign. So it can be, through a live video where people interact with your campaign. Um, it can be people who are actively contributing to your campaign. So ask them to, to create something for your campaign. I would say that's committing engagement. Um, or people who are active in communities you're creating. So Facebook groups, um, uh, forums, et cetera, et cetera. If people are actively contributing to your campaign, or people who are um, constantly revisiting your page, I would say that's committing engagement. That means that they understand your campaign message, that they cut your campaign message, and that they want to contribute to your goal, to your purpose. So we can use this kind of engagement um, in creating smart goals as well. So if a goal for my campaign would be, uh, to create a funny meme with 204 likes on Facebook. It's a nice goal, but it will only give you flirting engagement. If I want people to share a hashtag, that's probably a bit more impactful, and we can consider that dating engagement. And if we ask people to share personal stories, and they actually do that, that's committing engagement. Um, so with the the... the the types of content and the medium we choose, we also pick how the audience can engage with our content. Um, and you can, of course, use all bits and pieces and all types of media within a campaign. Um, but the engagement or the, the metric you get out of there is not equal to the, uh, uh, the metric you get out of uh, people who share a personal story, for example. Uh, I'm going to skip over this because we've touched upon calls to action already. Um, some tips on campaign identity. Good campaigns are recognizable. Good campaigns have a strong message, I've stated before, a strong key campaign message. Um, but they're also recognizable in the sense of branding, logos, um, touch, look and feel. Uh, what kind of words you use, um, what kind of hashtags they're using, and the name, of course. If you're just putting a variety of content out there, people will not recognize your campaign. And then it's way more difficult to get that committing engagement we're looking for. Um, so really think about uh, a campaign identity. Make sure it's aligned over different platforms, but also on the same platform. Create a look and feel um, that works for your campaign. Um, so be to the point, um, don't, um, to make it more difficult than it has to be, um, be short to the point, uh, maybe create a slogan that communicates the reason why you're there and use that on all types of content. Um, ideally you're also memorable. So try to be catchy, um, and try to talk to your audience directly, share your vision. People like campaigns with a clear vision they can be part of. 
um, but also don't bullshit. Um, be authentic and be believable. And be, as mentioned before, keep it consistent. Create something that people immediately recognize um, when they see a piece of content from you again. And then after you've done all of that, um, you get hopefully a nice amount of metrics. Um, and also metrics, as mentioned before, are not created equal. So when we look into reach and views, we're pretty much looking at vanity metrics. We know that it was a beautiful campaign that people viewed it and that we've reached a lot of people, but we don't know what they actually did with the information we gave them. So probably a donor of someone who funds your campaign is pretty happy with these metrics, but it doesn't really show the impact you've got. So when creating smart goals, don't only include vanity metrics. Quite often it's nice to just include them because it shows you a big number, but also look into impact metrics. So can we measure the amount of people who visit a website and spend some time on a website to, to get more information about my cause? Um, we call these conversions. So how many people visit a landing page I've created? Uh, we can also look into engagement rates. So how powerful and how potent is our content? If it's over 6%, you're, um, you're performing over the industry uh, average, the industry standard. That probably mean, means that you've got a powerful message. Um, when you're running ads, you can compare the price per click to uh, different ads that have been run in the same sector. So if your price per click is cheaper, then the, uh, the, the average price per click, that probably means that you've got a powerful campaign. And look into conversations. And I think this is maybe the most important thing you can measure, but you can't really put a number on it. Um, conversations are the moment you've, you, you have with your target audience and the moment you can really interact with them. So try to include, try to involve your target audience, have conversations with them, involve them in your campaign. And once you understand how your campaign is performing, you can use this for your content planning. So are people responding positively to videos or to memes or to, to calls to actions? Use that for the, the, the rest of your campaign. So don't plan a campaign from beginning to end in its entirely. You have to create moments for iteration, learn from the metrics, learn what works and what not. Learn how, or learn from uh, the way your audience responds to your campaign. Uh, and then plan ahead. Create time to engage with your audience, create time to analyze your statistics, your metrics, iterate throughout. Um, and by planning a campaign for, I don't know, two weeks ahead, if you're running a, a bit longer campaign, that's perfectly fine. Um, and it will help you to stay consistent, um, but don't plan a full campaign from beginning to end because you miss these opportunities to iterate. So when we're looking into analytics and to metrics, it's important to really understand what they're telling you. So take some time, get to know your metrics, Learn from these metrics. Um, don't report the what, but try to understand the why and learn from that and iterate based on that information. And again, this also goes for your smart goals. If you, if you have a clear goal where you want 20 people to call a phone number and you've got six months to get there and after three months, um, only two individuals called your phone number, you've got time to iterate, to adjust your approach and still be able to reach your goal. So make sure that your, your indicators are right. Make sure that you, that, you're, that you know how to stay on track. Um, try to learn from what happens and what the consequences are for your campaign. Another way to do this is to baseline campaigns. Um, and that's where you 
create some kind of evaluation, a place to start, and then you um, do the same or similar evaluations in later stages as well. If you've got a strong baseline, you can use that for your smart goals. So for example, um, 5% of uh, the comments on this platform is filled with hate. That's a nice baseline. Then you can start campaigning on the platform. And then after three months, you do the same evaluation. And then suddenly it's 4%. Then maybe your campaign contributed to that change. So you can also think about baselining your, your campaign um, and then use that as something to measure upon throughout the campaign. Also, try to implement monitoring and evaluation from the start. Again, this goes to the point for iteration. Um, it's important to have a clear idea and a clear understanding of what's happening with your campaign so you can learn from that. Um, and don't only look at numbers, also look at how your audience responds to your campaign. Look at these conversations you're having. Maybe they, they help you with creating better and more powerful content along the way. Um, so these are the questions you should ask before you start designing a campaign. So what does success look like for me? Can I formulate those in SMART goals? Can we measure those goals? And can I check on the change? Uh, can I check on the campaign so I can change throughout? Iterate throughout your campaign by learning from these engagements and learning from these metrics. And before we go to a little exercise, um, I would like to open the floor to questions. Are there any questions? Feel free to just start your webcam or put them in the chat. OK, um, if there are no questions at this point, I've created a nice small exercise where we can practice with the things we've discussed today. And I will share the link in the chat. It's a mural page, and I will briefly introduce it by sharing my window. So this is the mural page. And at the beginning of this session, we had some topics like racial injustice, polarization and hate, or just hate, or just polarization, um, and youth unemployment. Um, in a minute or so, I'm going to ask you to start your cameras, and I will turn mine off. Um, and then together you can pick one of the topics where you have to create a campaign for. So you will be a small campaign team. Um, and I'm going to ask you to create a clear key campaign message for this campaign. Um, I've created yellow post-its on this mural. And if you just double click on one of the post-its, you can type in it. Quite easy. You can also drag it around. And if you double click on an empty space, you'll create a new post it note. If you want to remove it, just click on it, press backspace or delete. Should be easy. Um, in the next, let's say, 20 minutes, I'm going to ask you to create a little campaign idea. Focus on the key campaign message first, and then think about what kind of smart goals you can link to this campaign. And make sure they're smart, so specific, measurable, attainable, relevant, and time-bound. And try to include different types of engagement. Try to include um, dating, flirting, but also committing engagement. Um, and see if we can create a simple campaign idea in just 20 minutes with impact. So without looking at only at views and reach, we're going to create something that moves people to become a game changer. Okay, I'm going to ask you to share your cameras and your videos and your audio um, and work together on this mural. I will disappear for a couple of minutes and if there are any questions, just um, 
give me a shout and I will join and help you. Hi, sorry, my connection is not great, so I'll stick to audio. No nice to meet everyone. Thanks for everything. It's very interesting. Sure thing. Um, so pick one of the topics we've uh, we've started with in the session. So it's either racial injustice, polarization, hate, or youth unemployment. And then try to craft a key campaign message for a campaign to counter or provide alternatives to these issues. And then okay. see if we can come up with some nice smart goals with societal impact. Okay, wonderful. Uh, Martina, I will gladly leave it up to you. Uh, no pressure. <laughs> no pressure at all. No, it's just a matter of picking a topic. So which, did you make any of those suggestions or, um, yeah, I I think you know, mine was youth unemployment and hate polarization, which is pretty broad in itself. But yes. Okay, uh, I I feel like youth unemployment is maybe something that is not often discussed, uh, at least from my perspective. Yeah. So that would be really interesting to to work on developing a campaign for that uh, topic. So sure. uh, are you okay with that? Of course. Yeah. Sorry, I'm just getting a lot of. Um, tutorials from the mural uh, website uh, ah, for this time. Ah, okay. Okay. Audience. Okay. Perfect. So we can start with uh, understanding the problem. So the problem would just be youth unemployment, yes? Yes. Um, yeah, youth unemployment. And when you say a youth, solution. Just, to, just to clarify, um, youth, you're referring to what age? Um, I'm guessing just uh, 18 to 35, just the a African Union youth definition. Okay. Just to make sure we're on the same page. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so the solution would be, or a possible um, solution. Of course, we don't have the yeah. exact answer yet. Maybe make the youth aware of opportunities or like there are available in their community, in their municipality or area, maybe just because they they don't know how to think about the box or they, they don't know they have the opportunity to do so. That could be a, a, a solution. Just, yeah, that. Um, okay. So, yeah. I wrote uh, raise youth awareness of opportunities in their local communities. Mm -hmm. Do you agree with that? Is that a possible sol positive solution? I, I think you're more of an expert than I am, but I would say that that sounds entirely practical. I think, uh, oh, especially yeah, it's for. It's no, <laughs> no, no, no. I think, especially uh, when we're thinking, again, when we're thinking about evaluation, I think when it comes to a call to action, uh, I think that that's a very easy, not easy because uh, I think raising awareness can can often be, uh, I think maybe, you already correct me if I'm wrong, but raising awareness is maybe sometimes more difficult to track unless you're directing people to web pages um, because yeah. the call to action might involve someone going to a website. It may involve people going to places in the community um, to to meet and to gather. But I think, uh, yeah, that's, that's entirely reasonable. Um, okay, so now invite a specific um, action. Just, so, just to step in for one for one second, Eric. Sorry, by all means. Uh, apologies. Um, if you would, were to translate this for something um, the audience could understand, or if you if you were to communicate this in a campaign, you would never say okay. raise youth awareness, right? So yeah. maybe say um, there are opportunities in your local communities. So then you have yeah. this awareness part out of it, and it's it's a credible solution in, in that sense, okay. right? Yeah, like and then, know your options. Kind of thing. Exactly, yeah. And if you were to, maybe I'm already spoiling your work, but if you were to create smart goals linked to this, then awareness could be one indicator, but you can also look into impact. You can create different smart goals, one with yeah. at least we've raised awareness, but also we see a decrease in youth unemployment. Okay, perfect. So uh, there are opportunities in your local community. Know your options is the solution, yes? Okay. Yes. Uh, so then a call to action. So 
what do we want our our campaign to uh, to to guide or instruct or inform young people to do, or these youth, the uh, eighteen to thirty-five? Um, to I don't know how to say this in a small and succinct manner, but just to exp I mean, know their options <laughs> to explore other um, areas of em of employment that might not be the um, mm, not expected, but the traditional way, the traditional path to take. Okay, so uh, explore other areas of employment, uh, explore taking a less traditional path. Yes, I guess. Okay. Yes. Uh, okay. okay. Smart goals. <laughs> Okay, so we would start with uh, specific, right? I mean, yes, yes. Um, okay. What do we want to achieve? Um, a certain amount. Mount, uh, I, I think, yes. I mean, do do we already have activities imagined and all these things? Because it kind of mm -hmm. rely on those. So I guess, like, maybe do we want videos, short videos of? young entrepreneurs to motivate others so shall we do like a certain like as they say here 2000 views or 100 shares of those videos these kind of things yeah exactly so i think for us it's to consider how we envision this specific uh, goal looking so what do we want to yeah. achieve and how i think does this contribute to addressing the issue of youth unemployment for example Yes, but in order to get goals, we also need to already envision how we are planning to do that. So like, yes, videos, are we planning to have like um, maybe a, a, a poll on the page or on Facebook or whatever at the end of the, of the um, intervention in order to see if perceptions have changed, if now they realize, yes, there are more options or they think, um, Actually, I already knew all of this. It doesn't make a change to my life. Um, so we can say a thousand views on the video, 200 poll responses. And, and I guess my question would be, people watching this video will accomplish what? So the, so the, the goal of these, these video campaigns would be um, I just, sorry, I, so just to clarify, I work as a member of the project, but I'm not a, an expert by any means in in, um, yeah. in campaigning. So when I'm asking these questions, I don't mean them from the perspective, please explain to me, because I know, rather, uh, working together, yeah? So mm -hmm. um, yes, so my question is, for example, um, yeah, will, will these videos guide people to a specific place to that would encourage them to, as you had mentioned, to see other entrepreneurs and what they're doing to get them to start thinking out of the box to maybe create their own job, for example? Yes, so that, that's why the idea would be uh, after a, a, a certain relevant amount of time, there could be a quiz or an online poll where we see, okay, after we've released these videos, do you think, um, have you changed your idea that there, there are more opportunities out there? Are you more inspired to go out there and mm -hmm. seek opportunities? Um, all these kind of things. And I, I guess it's an it's a online, offline approach as well, because, I mean, it depends on the context. Um, but yes, I think that there must be some kind of audience interaction after we see the videos or like comment analysis, sentiment analysis, these things as well. It's important. But I am um, divergent here. The, I mean, <laughs> this, this should take two days, <laughs> not 20 minutes, but yeah. Right. Um, when yeah, yeah, when we do this with our youth, we, we also do like three days workshops and stuff. So this feels very familiar. <laughs> sure. Um, I mean, oh, okay. Um, what do we want to achieve? We want to change perception on opportunities. 
Uh, Jordi, would you consider? Would this be considered a smart uh, goal? It's it's a start of a smart goal. I mean, it it, it depends whether we want it to be an a, an actual indicator rather than a goal. I mean, because then we would say eighty percent of um, the poll takers have changed perception on their situation, have more mm -hmm. have a more positive. Yeah. Um, perspective on youth employment than before yeah yeah so so um when we're, when we're tracking perceptions that that pretty much screams baseline to me so you need some kind of baseline and they can track whether that perception changed over time with your campaign activities yeah. so that can definitely be a smart goal um i would if i would write it down right now you can just use fictional numbers of course because you don't have the baseline yet but it could be mm -hmm. change perceptual opportunities from uh, a 35 percent positive to 45. so there's an increase in uh in that perception and then put some uh, uh, an amount of time on it but that's when you start when you craft smart goals for a campaign and you know your campaign will be six months long and so probably you would you, you do a baseline before the campaign starts maybe another yeah. poll in the middle and then one at the end and you can track whether your campaign was successful through that yes exactly um so any other specific goals we want to measure i i apologize if i missed that someone at least oh no it's okay um uh do we, I don't know. Um, sorry, I just feel better in this pod <laughs> being by myself. Um, maybe, maybe I can I can challenge your thinking. Um, so youth employment is the problem. Unemployment. Unemployment. We want, yeah. yeah, so, and we want, to solve that problem. So for me, um, real life, real world impact would be to um, help these young people to find a job, right? Employment, yes. yes. So maybe we can think of offline activities in relation to that. Maybe we can set up a job market where they come, yeah. you invite them, um, and they can have a chat with different sectors, different areas of employment, Could, so how, couldn't how, we how, also like map or create a network of bi local businesses that would be open to internships and all these things as well? Yes, yes, definitely. And we can right. So you're suggesting then rather than dr addressing the youth specifically, it would be a matter of rather addressing uh, the businesses more so. Yeah, I mean it's it's always the vicious circle. Youth uh, in most. Um, context youth are not employed because they don't have enough experience but they can get the experience and all these things right. so to also, also open the mind of the employers mm -hmm. and and say actually if you invest in the youth it's a long-term investment and um, why not give it a try yeah but you can also do both right, right. so that both yes, yes, the same exactly. goal so the one yeah, side of the awareness your, rating. Job market idea. So the solution will be connecting youth to uh, businesses, yes? I think it's more of a smart goal, don't you think? So I think that the solution was already correct, but then you've got different smart goals that contribute to that solution. So you've got change perception that contributes to your proposed solution. But then also getting uh, businesses involved to offer them new opportunities. And that, because I, I understand the smart goals can be a bit tricky. Um, but when we think in smart goals, we, we really we, we make our impact measurable, right? So for example, if, if a smart goal could be um connecting businesses to young people you can put a number on there like i want to introduce at least 10 kids from this neighborhood to four different businesses yeah. and you've got something to aim for 
Um, and that's, that's specific, it's measurable, it's hopefully attainable, it's super relevant, and then the only thing you're missing is time. So you can say, if my, per if my campaign runs for six months, yeah. And then you've got your smart goal there. So you don't always yeah. have to divide it through S, M, A, R, T. You can also formulate it in one sentence, of course. Yes. Um, I mean, and I think the, the third link is the youth itself, maybe having um, opening channel of communi communications among peers to discuss challenges, but also solutions. <laughs> Yeah, I think that's a good idea. So it's basically creating a community, right? About yeah, I mean, problem. just thinking out loud. I mean, just because you're unemployed, you might feel all alone and feel stuck in a rut. But if you talk about it with people your age or with your same similar background, you know that one, you're not by yourself, or you're not. You might not be the only one in the same situation, but you can also see um, and talk with someone with your same of your same age that has a different path and can inspire you. So it can be a very horizontal uh, line of communication and easy and trustworthy. Yeah, so they great can, idea. Like, small forums in the in the city like in the youth center or the community center something like that in like every month or so i'm going to write it down because i really like this idea <laughs> no. <laughs> yay glad i could help out <laughs> <laughs> Maybe just uh, before we wrap up this session, um, uh, I think uh, we need some numbers just to just to play with it, right? Yeah. So if we if we would envision this campaign, maybe for a specific neighborhood or a town, um, mm -hmm. how many? Wh when would we call this campaign a success? When do we know when we made societal impact or made an impact in this town or neighborhood? Um, I mean, in a neighborhood, let's say maybe 10 businesses have agreed to, um, to give youth an opportunity, let's say, or, or there have been, um, because we talk about creating a network of businesses and youth, so there have been five let's call, um, as you said, or either a job fair or five business halls where uh, youth and businesses interact. Okay. So more or less five networking events. Yeah, I get, yeah. Gathering Perfect. youth and businesses. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I find um, what often helps, and this is just thinking out loud, of course, as well, um, and this may detract, but also uh, inviting NGOs and other organizations that are looking for um, opportunities to um, invite uh, internships, volunteers, et cetera, et cetera. It depends if the person has the opportunity to uh, work free of charge, if you will. So, of course, yeah. that's a difficulty depending on the, the region. Some people, of course, need to make money. So that's just something that I find. Uh, I'm from the U.S. So in the U.S., when people are, are struggling with work, I always say, go volunteer with an organization. It's a great way to get experience. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I think businesses also... Um, we don't have to, it doesn't have to be private sector as well, but as you said, you also include NGOs or the the civil, um, the municipal society stakeholders, you know, maybe there is an, an opportunity for one uh, member of the youth community to work in city hall and 
you know, yeah. I don't know, help out or get mentorship for one of them. So just different members of the fa like societal fabric that can help out and include youth. Mm -hmm. um, so I think real quick, yeah. working over to relevance. So how will meeting this goal uh, help you? Does it uh, does the goal relate to your mission? So I, I would imagine that connecting young people to businesses increases the likelihood that these young people will uh, receive employment at the end. So I feel like it's directly yeah. relevant. Mm -hmm. But I would imagine it's it's probably helpful to also track how many people ended up employed at those businesses afterwards. I don't know if they're able, I don't know if they share that information, but because I think uh, I think both of you, correct me if I'm wrong, but you can have a hundred career fairs. And if there are zero jobs garnered from those, then I think they would be, this This would be viewed irrelevant, right? Yeah, yes, mm -hmm. I know a result in itself, but yes, relevant, um, irrelevant. Um, And I think, and, sorry. Yeah. I, I think there's another thing as well. This is just something to consider. Is I think uh, it also helps to um, create create more connections and potentially remove stigmas. So I used to work with older adults, for instance, and when we would connect older adults to technology companies, technology companies were often amazed at how sharp many of the people we were working with because the average age of the communities that I was supporting was, was 93. So when we would connect these people to these tech companies, they'd be like, oh man, those people are really sharp. So I think removing that stigma really helps those tech companies understand that they can work directly with uh, older older adults, they don't have to have us as a moderator or a means of, of uh, doing that. So I think if you were to connect 18 year olds where maybe someone at a business organization, whatever the case may be, might have a stigma that might remove that stigma as well and increase, increase the likelihood that they seek younger applicants, which is ageism, but are, we'll say are more open to younger applicants. Yeah, no, for sure. Yeah. And that's, I mean, that's the whole goal, right? Know your options. Think about it. Right. The usual things. Uh, and then time bound, I think, is uh, so how long would you envision this? Goal? I mean, six months makes sense if we have like monthly networking events. I um, mean, take the first month to plan and the rest of the events to run. Uh, same thing to, I think it's pretty plausible. Okay. And so you have like a month to plan and then one month per. Uh, yeah, a uh, month to plan month. slash get get the project known. You know, like advertise the first meeting and all these things. Yeah. Anything else worth adding? I mean, it's a pretty nice project. I have to say, it's quite exciting. <laughs> I mean, I'm not, I'm not like boasting. I think it's honestly, it could be quite a nice intervention to carry out in real life. Oh, I did one of these too, and I thought it was the coolest idea. I never did it, but. Yeah, it's, that's it's, what it always happens. Yeah. Yeah, but I think uh, I think probably the the important thing when developing smart goals. Correct me if I'm wrong, wrong, Jordi, but it's also understanding your limitations. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's that's definitely a part of it. Um, and the reason why I like smart goals so much is that you're you have to look for for impact. So it's not all, only about getting a message out there. It's about finding creative ways to fix your issue, to, to provide a solution to your problem. Um, and I think looking back at these past, what is it, 20, maybe 25 minutes, it's incredible how quick you came up with a, a campaign that actually strives for societal impact and that makes measurable impact. Um, so yeah, smart goals, <laughs> they might sound boring, but it's it's forcing you to, to look for a, Credible solutions, creative solutions, and also know your limitations and and understand. Okay, maybe within six months, it's the only thing we can hope for. But yeah, that that forces you to create realistic campaigns instead of let's aim for the moon and then end in your own backyard. So a question that I have, Jordi, is with the smart goals. Where in this process do you take into consideration how to? So, for example, we're addressing how to address the issue, but within, for example, uh, five networking events gathering youth and businesses, where do you address uh, the process of 
garnering businesses and young people and connecting them together. Because of course, there's a how do we do that task within mm -hmm. this smart goal. So, because I think that's probably where you have this, uh, I don't know that we can do this. Presumably as you're working through, this is why I think it's helpful to work in a group and that someone can immediately shoot this down, especially if you're working, if you were to develop a smart goal with someone that is a business, or has a business, as well as someone that is a young person that would immediately say, no, this doesn't make any sense. You're designing this for me, but not understanding who I am. So mm -hmm. I, I'm curious in when in the process you you add that level. So, so to add that additional layer of complexity, um, within the curriculum, we talk about smart goals and actions. So first mm -hmm. we focus on the smart goals, and then we see what kind of actions we have to take to make that smart goal work. Um, I left it out for this um, shorter section because that can take hours to create all the actions um, that, that, that a company is smart for. But yeah, it's definitely part of it. And it also helps you understand um, how to make it a reality. So for um, a big dream, I want to make a full feature video. Yeah, that sounds nice for a campaign, but in the end, you kind of, by going through these actions you have to take, you understand that, oh, God, I need a lot of people who help me with this. Probably it's not realistic. Maybe I have to dream a bit smaller. Um, so yeah, yeah, definitely that goes hand in hand with smart goals. That's part of that process. Yeah, and, and I think uh, it's also really interesting, Noemi, mean, you said that the smart goals task uh, is difficult. And I think we just proved why it's difficult because it's not, um, and, and this is just to speak to the general sense in which we work and all of us are NGOs, or sorry, a lot of us work in NGOs and nonprofits and there's no easy answer in how to address a problem. If there was, and I'm not suggesting anything, you know what I mean? But uh, people often ask like, how do you resolve a problem? And like, if I knew how to end homelessness, everybody would end homelessness. This is something that we could do. So it's a matter of us trying these, testing them, seeing what works, what doesn't work and understanding that again, maybe I found something that works, but it only works here in Warsaw, Poland. So now how do we adapt that to uh, Krakow? Or how do we adapt that to Warsaw, but working with people that are 20 to 25? I think every time you work, there's a complete different level of complexity. Uh, and I think it's it's always interesting to think how to do this. And I think, yeah, this is why we exist in the nonprofit sector and, and grants and everything, because ultimately we're just taking, we're testing and trying. And some work, some don't, some, that's it. For yeah. Me. Nice. Beautiful said. All right. um, sure. Looking at time, I think um, we should wrap up this session. Mm -hmm. So let's open the floor for final questions, remarks, comments. Yeah. Again, just to highlight, you can find all this material on the website. Um, hopefully, you all had a nice teaser of how this curriculum works and how we're trying to change the focus in campaigns from looking at content towards looking at impact. Um, and that's that's why I, I really enjoyed this exercise because I already see a campaign with a lot of impact. Um, I would like to thank you, Martina, for joining us, for contributing. And I would like to thank Aaron as well for helping us out.